Hello there, this is Dimitris Christou and we're back with another video tutorial and for another time we're going to try to build something nice using Blender uh, let's begin I'll hit the X key to delete my default cube here and select delete and hit shift A and add mesh and ecosphere moving over here at the ecosphere options and I'll increase the subdivision from 2 to 3 OK. Now let's zoom in to see our ecosphere. And as you can see here, our ecosphere uses 162 vertices. Now moving to the modifiers panel, click this little icon to move to the modifiers panel. And I'll click add modifier and I'll add a displace modifier. So the displace modifier here needs a texture. I'm moving over to the material options here for my ecosphere and click new to add a new material I bring the specular intensity down to zero and I'm going to move over to the textures now click this little icon and I will click new to add a new texture and as you can see here this texture affects our material but we don't want that we want this texture to only affect the displacement so I'll deselect I'll uncheck this one and as you can see now this texture no longer affects the material so moving back to the modifiers and let's make the texture affect our displace modifier click texture and I'll now hit 1 and 5 on my main keypad to switch the front author view and I'll increase the strength here for my displace modifier let's set it up to 3.5 ok now I'll hit the Del key on my memory keypad again to frame my object and I'll hit Control alt 0 to position my camera and I'll right click this frame here to select my camera and I'll set the X and Z to 0 and I'll also bring my camera back let's set the Y value here to minus 4. I'll also move to the camera options here to the camera panel and I'll change the focal length. I'll bring it down from 35 to 30. Okay. We can also move our camera back a bit more. Let's set it to minus 4.5. Okay. So we have our ecosphere here. I'm going to hit the right mouse button to select it and I'll move over here at the particle panel click it and before adding a particle system here for our ecosphere we'll need a particle so I'm moving on to layer 2 click this uh, little icon here to move to the second layer and I'll hit shift A and add mesh another ecosphere I'll again change the subdivisions, bring them up from 2 to 3 and I'll also hit the shading here option to smooth. Now our particle here is ready, I'm going to add a material to it. Move over to the material panel and click new. And I'll change the name of this material to particle. OK. I'll bring the diffuse color down, I'll make it a bit darker at about here and I'll change the specular from Cooktor to Wardislaw. I'll also uh, collapse the shading and the transparency here and expand the mirror options and I'll click this little field here because we want some reflectivity here for our particle and I'll set the reflectivity to 0 0.3 and I'll also add a bit of Fresnel here at about here ok so our particle here is ready let's apply it on our object using the particle system moving back to layer 1 select the uh, the first ecosphere here and let's add the particle system move over to the particle panel and hit plus the type of the particle system we'll use for our ecosphere here will be here and of course we won't be using here, we want an object to appear uh, as a particle. Let's click object 
and from the drop down menu here click it and select the second ecosphere. OK. Now, as I said before, our uh, uh, ecosphere here uses 162 vertices. So I'll set the number of particles here from 1000 to 162. And I'll click here for the advanced particle options for a while and click emit from vertices. So what we're telling Blender now is that we want uh, pretty much to have one particle for every vertex. Now I'm, I'm going to uncheck advanced and I'll just change the size here for my particle from 0 0.05 to 0 0.01. Okay. Now we have the particle system ready. I'm going to uh, modify the material for my object here a bit more. I'll move over to the uh, to the material settings. I'm going to add some mirror for this material as well. I set the reflectivity from 0 to 0 0.3 and add a bit of Fresnel here as well. And about here. And moving over to the texture panel. And we have the first texture here, it's used by the Displace modifier. Let's add another one, click this field and hit New. Now we'll be using a Blend Texture. Select it. And moving down here at the Colors options. And I'll click Ramp. Now we have a ramp here, I'll modify it a bit. Click over here at this black color here. I'll set the alpha value up to 1 because I want uh, the black color also to affect our material. I'll, I'll change the color. Let's make it bright. And let's make it a strong green color when the, where the black was. And for the white one I'm going to change this. Let's say to this one. OK. And I'll also change the, uh, the blend here from horizontal to vertical. OK. Now I think we're good. I'm going to change another option here at the render panel. Click this little camera icon here. And I'm going to increase the samples here for the anti-aliasing. I'll bring them up from 8 to 11 and moving down to the post-processing click this little triangle to expand the, the post-processing options and I'll click Edge and bring the threshold up to 30 OK now let's render an image to see how it looks or oh, before we do that I'll hit 7 on my main keypad while my cursor is over the 3D view for the top author view, I want to uh, grab my lamp here, right mouse button click to select it and hit the G key to grab it, let's move it and I'll also hit 1 on my memory keypad and grab, hit G and Z to grab it on the Z axis, let's move it down at about here, ok now 0 again on my memory keypad to switch to camera perspective view I'll change the world options a bit, click this little icon and I'll click paper sky and blend sky and I'll bring the zenith color down a bit more OK and for my scene here I'm going to add a bit of environment lighting check this one and I'll use the approximate solution here for our gather and I'll click Pixel Cache. We won't be using Ray Trace. And I'll also click Fall Off and set the strength. Let's set it to 3. OK. Now I think we're good to go. Let's render an image to see how it looks. And as you can see, we have the we also have the edge here appearing as we set it at the post-processing options
and I think it looks pretty nice. Now I'll hit the escape key. I'll bring the edge threshold here value up a bit. Let's set it to 40. And there's one more thing I want to do. I'll move over here and let's show the render view. As you can see, the second color here of uh, from our ramp, we can barely see it affecting the material. So hitting the escape key again and select our first ecosphere and move over to the textures. Sometimes you first have to click the material and then the textures to appear. And let's take this color and move it down. We want it to take a bit more space in our material, in affecting our material here. So I'll set it from 1, let's say to 0 0.6. Okay. Let's see now how it looks. Let's render an image. We have to wait a bit. Okay. And now you can see that we have the second color appearing, you know, even better showing in our render. Now I'll hit the escape key and let's add a bit of compositing notes here for our scene. Simple stuff again. I've split my 3D view and changed the upper part to be a node editor. Let's click this little icon and click use nodes. And we're getting a render and a composite node. Let's bring them to the side. And I'll also hit Shift A and add output a viewer. Let's make our viewer bigger. Okay. And as I said before, simple stuff here. I'll hit Shift A and add filter. Let's add a glare node. Let's grab it and connect it. And I'll also take the glare output here to our viewer so we can see how it affects our scene. And I'll also click backdrop. Okay. So oddly we can't see our render here at the backdrop. Let's see. Pretty strange. Okay, let's move on. We won't be using the streaks option here for our glare node, but we'll be using fog, a fog glow. Okay, and now we have the backdrop appearing. And I bring the threshold value here down from 1. Let's set it to 0 0.3. And we have a stronger uh, effect here by our glare node. So this looks nice. I'll hit Shift A again to add the distort node and it's going to be a lens distortion node. Let's connect this one as well and I'll just bring the dispersion value here up to 0 0.1. Okay. Now in order for our uh, compositing nodes here to work you can you should always take the output here from the lens distortion and bring it to the composite node so that the uh, the nodes will affect the final render. Okay, let's take a look. I think it looks pretty nice. So what we want to do now is add a bit of animation here for our scene. And again, it's pretty simple. I'll hit Shift A and add an empty. We can see our empty right here because it's pretty small. I'll click this little icon here for the empty object data. I'll, and I'll increase the size, set it from 1 to 2. Or perhaps 3. Okay. Now you can see the empty here. I'll hit 1 again on my memory keypad. To switch to front of view. And I'm at frame 1. I'm going to hit the I key and insert the location keyframe for my empty and click this little icon to move at the end of my animation here to frame 240 and I'll hit the G key and Z to move my empty on the Z axis and as I said before the empty here affects the displace modifier let's move it on the Z axis at about here 
and hit I and insert another location keyframe here. So I'm selecting my uh, first ecosphere here and moving to the modifiers panel. And of course, for the empty to effect here, our displays, we have to uh, to tell Blender that we want to use the empty. So I'm clicking at the texture coordinates here, and I'll change it from local to object. We want an object to affect the texture coordinates for the displays modifier, and click this little drop down uh, field here, and Blender waits for an object, and select the empty. Okay. Now I'll hit zero on my mirror keypad to switch to camera perspective view. Move back to frame one. And let's hit play to see how it looks. And as you can see for a smooth motion here, I haven't moved my uh, empty on the Z axis or whatever axis. I haven't moved it a lot because we'll be having, you know, a bit of a crazy fast motion. You can also use it if you want to. Now I'll hit the escape key and let's render another frame to see how it looks at about here and click render image so this is actually it this is our video tutorial I hope you liked it you can as always experiment experiment with the lights experiment with the colors applied uh, you can also use different objects different types of objects to apply the displays modifier and use them as uh, particle systems use particle systems on them. You can use UV spheres, you can even use a subdivided cube and see how it looks, see how it affects your scene. You can also try rendering this using cycles, I'm pretty sure you're going to get some interesting results as well. So this is it and thanks for watching.